Rambam Mishnah Torah, one chapter a day, Matnot Aniyim, chapter 3. Halacha 1. Pe'a should not be left in one field for another field. What is implied? If a person owned two fields, he should not harvest one entirely and leave the amount of power appropriate for both in the second field. This is derived from Vaikra 23.22. Do not completely remove the grain in the corners of your field. Implied is that one should leave in each field the pa'a that is appropriate for it. If one left pa'a from one field for another, it is not pa'a. Halakha 2. Although one's entire field was sowed with one crop, if there was a stream, even if it did not flow or an irrigation ditch, provided water flowed through it and it was established in the midst of the field that would prevent one from harvesting both sides at the same time, it is considered as two fields and one should give pa'a on each side for the portion there. Halakha 3. Similarly, a path belonging to a private individual which is four cubits wide or a public thoroughfare which is 16 cubits wide separates between one field and another. Different rules apply regarding a private path that is less than four cubits wide or a public path that is less than 16 cubits wide. If it is permanent, i.e. it is maintained in the summer and in the rainy season, it is considered as a separation. If it is not permanent in the rainy season, it is not considered as a separation and the entire area is considered as one field. Halakha 4. There are other factors which constitute a separation into two fields. A. Land that was uncultivated that was neither sown nor ploughed. B. Land left fallow that was ploughed but not sown. C. Crops were interrupted with another crop. For example, there was wheat on either side and barley in the middle. D. One harvested in the middle of his field before the grain reached a third of its maturity and ploughed the portion which he harvested. The above applies provided the width of each of the above is three rows of, of, of ploughing. This is less than the area necessary to sow a quarter of a cub. When does the above apply? With regard to a small field that is 50 cubits by 2 cubits or less. If it is larger than this cultivated or fallow land does not cause it to be divided in two unless it was as wide as the area necessary to sow a quarter of a cub. In this instance, even the smallest amount of another crop creates a separation. Halakha 5. If locusts consumed a field in, in its midst, or ants destroyed it, should one plough the portion that was consumed, it is considered to be a separation. Halakha 6. The following law applies when one sows crops on a mountain slope that is not level, but instead has knolls and hollows. Even though he cannot plough it all at once, and sow it all at once, but instead must plough the knolls by themselves and the hollows by themselves, it is considered as a single field. He should leave one portion of pa'a at the end of the mountain for the entire mountain. Halakha 7. The following laws apply when one sows crops on terraced, on terraced land, when each terrace is ten hand breadths higher than the other. One should leave pa'a separately for each terrace. If the heads of the rows are joined together, he should leave one portion of pa'a for the entire area. If they were less than ten hand breadths higher, he should leave one portion of pa'a even if the heads of the rows are not joined together. The following rules apply if there was a rock covering the surface of the entire field. If he must lift up the plough from one side and place it on the other side, it is considered an interruption. If not, it is considered an interrupt. It is not considered an interruption. Halakha 8. When a person sows a field that has trees, even though he sows it in squares b between the trees and thus the entire crop does not come together as one, he should give one portion of power for the entire field, for it is known that it is one field. It is only the place of the trees that causes the crop to be divided. Halakha 9. When does the above apply? When all ten trees are located in an area in which a sa'a of grain can be sowed. If, however, all ten trees were located in an area larger than that in which a sa'a of grain can be sowed, he should leave pa'a from every square separately. For the trees are far, far apart and they did not cause him to sow the field in squares. Halakha 10. Similarly, if squares of onions grow between vegetables, one should leave a single portion of pa'a for all the onions, even though the vegetables grow between them and cause them to appear as separate squares. Halakha 11. The following laws apply when a person sowed an entire field with one crop, but when certain places in the field began to dry out, he uprooted or pulled out the crops that had dried out on either side until the fresh crops appeared as separate blocks. If it was customary for people to sow that crop in individual rows, for example dill or mustard seed, he should leave pa'a for each individual square for an observer would say it was planted in separate rows. 
If it was a species that was usually sown throughout an entire field, for example grain or legumes, he should leave one portion of uh, for the entire field. Halakha 12. When does the above apply? When there were dried out portions on either side and the fresh portion in the centre. If, however, the fresh portions are on either side and the dried out portions and the dried out portion is in the centre, he should leave pa'a separately for the dried out portion and the fresh portions. Halakha 13. The following law applies when a person sowed a field with onions, beans, peas or the like. If he had the intent to sell some of the fresh produce in the marketplace and leave part of the field to dry out and to be put aside in storage, he is obligated to leave pa'a separately for both the portion he sells and the portion he harvests for storage. For produce sold in the market and produce set aside in storage are considered as two separate types. Halakha 14. When a person sows his field with one species, he should leave one portion of pa'a, even though he collects the crops in two grain heaps. If he sows two species, even though he makes only one grain heap, he should leave pa'a for each species separately. Halakha 15. The following law applies when a person sows two types of the same species. For example, he sows two types of wheat or two types of barley. If he stores them in one grain heap, he should leave one portion of pa'a. If he stores them in two grain heaps, he should leave, them, leave separate portions of pa'a. This is a halakha communicate, communicated by Moshe from Sinai. Halakha 17. When brothers have divided the estate they inherited, they should leave pa'a separately. If later they join together in partnership, they should leave only one portion of pa'a. When partners who have harvested half of a field break up the partnership, one taking the grain that was harvested already and one taking the standing grain, the one who took the grain that was harvested does not separate anything and the one who took the standing grain is required to separate only for the half which he took. If afterwards they re-establish their partnership and harvested the second half as partners, either one may separate pa'a for his colleague's portion of the standing grain from his own portion of the standing grain, but not for the portion that was already harvested. Halakha 17 there are situations in which pa'a may be given from different parts of a field for other parts of the same field that were harvested afterwards. For example, the grain of half a field ripened to a third of its maturity and half did not ripen to that extent. The owner harvested half of the portion that reached maturity. Afterwards, the remainder of the field ripened to one third and then he completed the harvest of the first half that reached a third of its maturity previously. He may separate pa'a from the crops harvested first for the middle portion and from the middle portion on the first portion and on the last portion. Halakha 18. The following laws apply when a person sells separate portions in his field to different people. If he sold his entire field, each one of the purchasers should leave pa'a for the portion that he purchased. If the owner of the field had begun to harvest his field and sold a portion and retained a portion, the owner of the field should leave the amount of pa'a appropriate for the entire field. The rationale is that since he began harvesting the field, he became obligated to separate pa'a for the entire field. If he sold the portions of the field before he began harvesting, the purchaser should separate pa'a for the portion he purchased and the owner for the remainder. Halakha 19. Only a high fence that separates between the branches of the trees divides an orchard with regard to the laws of pa'a. If, however, the fence separates on a lower level, but the branches and the trellises are intermingled above and touch the top of the fence, the orchard is considered a single entity and only one portion of pa'a should be given. Halakha 20 When two people purchased one tree in partnership, they should leave one portion of pa'a from it. If one, purchased the port, if one purchased the northern side of a tree and the one on the other purchased the southern side, each one should leave pa'a individually. Halakha 21 the following law, uh, laws apply to carob trees. Whenever one person stands next to one carob tree and his colleague stands next to another carob tree and they can see each other, the trees are considered as in one field and one portion of pa'a should be left for them. Different rules apply if, however, those on the extremes can see those in the centre, but those on the extremes cannot see each other. He may separate from those on the extremes for those in the centre and from those in the centre for those on the extremes. He may not, however, separate from those on one extreme for those on the other extreme. Halakha 22. The following law applies, laws apply to olive trees. All the trees on one, side of, on one of the sides of a city, for example, all of the olive trees on the entire western side or the east, entire eastern side of a city, are considered as being from one field and one portion of pa'a should be left for all of them. Halakha 23. A person who harvests a portion of his vineyard from either, from either side 
in order to lessen the demand on the line so that the other clusters will have more room and increase in size is called one who reduces. We've already explained that a person who harvests from one side is not considered as one who reduces. Therefore, he must leave the amount of power appropriate for the entire field, even though he harvested with the intent of selling grapes in the marketplace. If, however, he reduces the produce on the vines with the intent of selling the produce in the marketplace, he should not leave power for the produce that he took off. Nevertheless, if he reduces the produce on the vines with the intent of taking it home, he should leave the amount of power appropriate for the entire field from the grapes he, l from the grapes he left to be trodden for the vat.